Hello, my name is Shira Jones, recent graduate from Ashford University with a doctorate of psychology uh, with a specialization in mental health administration. My project entailed learning about self-care for mental health professionals. Brief project introduction includes that mental health professionals such as counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists, aim to help individuals recover from traumas and or adjust to life as a person with a mental illness. This type of engagement and work requires the clinician to be empathetic as well as compassionate which may lead to negative outcomes such as compassion, fatigue, burnout, and vicarious traumatization. It is common for mental health clinicians to experience their own mental illnesses, suicidality, um, and leave the field earlier than expected with individuals of similar training and education levels. It is thought that self-care can be used to help cultivate positive outcomes such as vicarious resilience and compassion satisfaction. My study background learned that Researchers have come to realize that teaching goals or giving tools for mental health professionals to use in developing self-care practices would be more beneficial than when specific skills or actions are taught. Mindfulness is one of the skills that is believed to be super helpful in teaching self-care to mental health professionals, but it is not the only goal of self-care. Individuals may benefit from a variety of skills, such as learning how to face ambiguity with ease, developing self-soothing techniques, um, and learning emotional regulation. This may be done in a variety of ways, such as promoting trauma stewardship, your traditional cognitive behavioral therapies, along with your third wave CBT models, such as acceptance and commitment therapy, and dialectical and behavior therapy. The intervention studied the most is mindfulness, with mindfulness-based stress reduction being the one studied more than any other mindfulness intervention. Despite the mindfulness-based stress reduction being found to be very effective in teaching self-care for mental health professionals, its participant um, compliance is low due to the time demands and the copious homework that an individual is faced with. So the goal of my project was to learn about effective self-care practices for mental health professionals and then how to go about teaching that. My conceptual framework um, includes a model proposed by Carson and Cooper in 1998 where there are three components. The first is stressors and so um, they, this is kind of like things that happen inside and outside of the clinician. The second component is moderators, and so these are strengths or characteristics that the clinician may have, such as um, self-compassion, time management, things along those lines. And then the third component is outcomes, which could be positive or negative. My method includes me carrying out the steps of a systematic literature review, answering two questions. The first question that was posed is what self-care practices are associated with positive outcomes for mental health professionals? The second question is what are evidence-based practices for teaching 
self-care to these clinicians. Along with this, there are several terms that I use often that I will explain at this time. And so the first is the term practice. And so this is just an action that can either be observable or not observable. An observable action would be journaling because that's something you can see. An unobservable action would be having acceptance over a situation because that's something that's not easily visible to someone outside of the clinician. The second term that I use often is evidence-based practices or evidence-based methods. And so this looks at an intervention against what that intervention was originally um, brought about to do, taking into, con into con concern or thinking about an individual's preferences, and then the person who's making these decisions, like their own knowledge and what they feel is important. So I conducted a systematic literature review, which is different from your typical literature review by attempting to have as little bias as possible in order to increase rigor, being specific as opposed to what steps are carried out, and being very very clear so in my project report there are documents that list all of the articles that i had an opportunity to look at as well as explain any decisions made about inclusion or exclusion of an article in total my data included 11 articles from the United States, Australia, and Europe. All articles were in English, which is the only um, language that I read fluently. And all of them were older than, I mean, were newer than 10 years, so they were recent. And of course, all were peer reviewed. Results from the first question, which is what self care practices are associated with positive outcomes for mental health professionals, gave me information related to what goals an individual kind of should aim to carrying out or aim to meet when it comes to their own personal well-being and wellness. And so I kind of saw information kind of being divided into several categories. The first being general wellness, which is like your physical health. So eating, sleeping, and moving in an appropriate amount. Receiving support in a variety of formal and informal ways. Work-life balance, and this includes setting boundaries around when work tasks are done, as well as what self-care things, such as eating and going to the bathroom regularly while at the office certain preventative me measures, such as acknowledging the impact of being a clinician may have on an individual, planning for difficult times, and daily self-care practices, approaching self-care, um, and kind of like what ideas need to be cultivated in order to bring about healthy habits, and then spiritual needs, which is a connection, which is connection to something bigger than the clinician, which may or may not be religious in nature. Um, and then finally, mindfulness and self-compassion, mindfulness being engagement with the current moment without the need to change it. Self-compassion being having feelings of warmth and support of oneself. Um, The second research question was, what are evidence-based methods for teaching self-care practices to mental health professionals? And so there are certain interventions or ways of doing this that um, fell into several categories. And so the first was methods usually saved for students. And so these are things such as um, person of the therapist, which is an intervention saved for individuals in their master's program. Um, supervision, meeting with mentors and professors, things along those lines. 
Next is psychological interventions such as cognitive behavioral therapies and um, encouraging creativity in one's self-care practices, positive psychology, and um, techniques used for individuals overcoming traumatic events. And then the last one being mindfulness interventions, which technically are psychological interventions, but their goal is helping an individual contact the current moment without the need to control. After my first two research questions were answered, I offered recommendations that an individual who is working to create a curriculum of self-care should consider when developing their particular intervention. And so I suggested that a developer seek to empower clinicians to kind of know themselves and know what's working, what's not working, um, be very clear about their goals, avoid giving copious homework assignments, and introduce the concept that self-care needs may change over time. Intervention formatting is kind of what needs to have, like your logistics of a curriculum, which of course is, you know, being specific. Um, including tools that an individual can use immediately upon completion of the intervention. Um, it was also thought to be important that participants are encouraged to be aware of whether they are a good fit for the intervention at hand, and that can be done by authors being clear and kind of communicating that in advertisements or abstracts when planning um, when planning their particular curriculum or how they're going to help individuals engage with their material. Possible next steps are um, to create, complete a wider, more expansive systematic literature review by broadening the scope of what articles and literature are included also making steps to access articles that are not in the researcher's native language by the use of translators with the ultimate goal of developing a curriculum of self-care for MHPs myself. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you have 